Hey there everyone, Prashun here from Full Stack Simplified. So in this video, we are going to have a look at web components, how to use them and how they could be helpful to build better websites. So basically, web components are set of web APIs that help us to create components that are modular, reusable and encapsulated. So by encapsulated, what we mean is we can define any styles, functions, attributes which will be only private or encapsulated within that particular component. And most important and most amazing thing about web components are we do not need to download or use any external libraries like Angular, Vue or React. And since this is already implemented in all the new browsers, we can directly use vanilla JavaScript to get started. So before we move ahead, let me show you a quick demo what we are going to build today. So we are going to have these simple cards of pet showing their images and their names. Then we have this view details button which is going to further show some information like breed and age for that particular pet and we can again click on this hide details button to hide those information so this button is particularly kind of a toggle button then we have another button called say hi which is simply going to alert a simple text from this pet saying hi to you so we are going to build all of these things using just web components so without any further ado let's quickly jump into the code In here we have a simple boilerplate codes for HTML, CSS and JavaScript all linked together. Now the first thing which we need to do is create a class which extends HTML element. Technically you can extend any particular HTML element with h1, p, tags, whatever you want if you are working on their extension but here we are going to use the root HTML element to create this class. For that I am going to create a separate folder and name it pet card and in here we are going to have this index.js file. I'm going to create a class called pet card which is going to extend HTML element like this. Now basically this class has four basic lifecycle methods. The first one is the constructor which obviously is called when an instance of the element is created or upgraded. The next one is the connected callback which is called every time when an element is inserted into the DOM. And opposite to that we have another lifecycle method called disconnected callback which is obviously called every time when the element is removed from the DOM. And then finally we have attribute changed callback which is going to be called whenever any attribute is added to our element maybe it is removed updated or anything any kind of changes which happens to any attribute provided to our custom element then this callback will be called so here i'm going to use this constructor function for this particular class and since we have extended to this html element class we also need to call the super function like this now if you remember during the intro we talked about encapsulation of our html element in order to achieve this feature, we are going to use a concept called Shadow DOM. So in simple words, Shadow DOM allows us to create a DOM subtree which is scoped inside our custom element. So this helps us to create styles and functions which is just scoped to our element. It is not going to affect the outside world or outside DOM. So here I'm going to say this dot attach shadow and this is a function where we need to pass some configuration as an object. So here I'm going to pass mode which I'll set to open. Now this essentially will help us manipulate this shadow DOM. We are going to see how we can do this. Now the next thing is to create a template and append that to our shadow root. For that I'm going to say this dot shadow root dot append child and then here we are going to pass this template variable which we are going to create in a moment so we're going to say template dot content dot clone node so we're going to clone that template and we're going to pass the true so this is basically is going to get the content of that template clone it and then append to our shadow root now the next step is obviously to create this template variable so i'm going to say const template is equals to document dot create element and then we are going to pass template here like this. Now here I'm going to set the inner HTML for this template which will be equals to a string literal and here we are going to define our HTML structure for our component. So I'm going to simply copy paste these small stuff and I'll also walk you through what exactly is happening here. So if we move to our completed component we see that we have a simple class here which is this dev pet card the outer part then we have this avatar this image and then we have this complete right side part which is this dev of class with details. We have then the name for this h2 and then we have this info for breed and age and then we have obviously this actions for our button. Now you may notice that we haven't set 
the src of the image or even any data for this s2 so this all is going to be taken care by javascript and you may also notice that we are using this slot in order to populate the data for read and age so this will basically allow us to take the data which we are going to pass as a child to our custom component which we are going to see so these things will be more clear when we walk through our code now as you also can also see that we have exported our class so that we can use it in our index.js to create our custom element so for that i'm going to say window dot custom elements dot define then you here we're going to pass the name by which we are going to call our element in our html file but a normal convention is to use a small case so i'm going to say pet dash card like this and then here we are going to pass the class which we created so we are under pet card now let us also edit this import so we are under index.js like this and now if we save everything and in our html file let's see if anything is getting rendered or not so first of all since we are using this export and import statement we also need to define a type of module and then in here i'm going to call our custom component so i'm say pet card and simply like this as we can see that we are going we are seeing this basic structure so our component is getting rendered now as a next step let us populate this data using the get attribute so for that we're going to use the another lifecycle method which is attribute changed callback and this callback gives us the name of the attribute which is passed to our custom element the old value and the new value so in here what we are going to do is we're going to say this dot shadow root dot query selector so i'm going to select this h2 which lies within this details div so i'm going to say dot details h2 and then here i'm going to set the inner text to this this dot get attribute function and here we want we are going to pass the name of the pet so i'm going to say name like this now another two thing which we're going to do is set the src and the alt text for this image so i'm simply going to grab this thing and since our image lies in this avatar div so i'm going to say dot avatar and then image then instead of setting the inner text i'm going to set the src which will be equals to avatar so we're going to pass an avatar attribute to our custom element like this and then we are also going to set our alt text to the name of this pet now in order to make sure we always get the updated data from this get attribute function we need to call another static getter called observed attributes so i'm going to say static getter so static get observed attributes and in here we're going to return those attributes which we want to observe so i'm going to say return since we have only two things we have a name attribute and avatar attribute so what this essentially is going to do is it is going to keep an eye on these attributes now once they are changed or once they are removed or added whatever it may be the case it is going to inform this lifecycle method and then we are going to always get the updated data so let us now actually pass these attributes in our custom element and see if the things are working the first attribute will be the name which in my case will be murphy and then we need to pass avatar so basically the image so here i have bunch of images of different dogs so the first one will be a rottweiler so i'm going to say images slash rottweiler dot jpeg so now if we save this we can see that we are getting this murphy and also the image obviously the style is bit off but we are going to handle this in just a moment now let us also pass these breed and age with the help of slot which we talked about so i'm going to create a span and here i'm going to pass rottweiler because the rate breed is rottweiler and in order to make this thing available to our custom element what we need to do is we need to pass an attribute called slot and then we are going to use the same name which we used here so i'm going to say name breed similarly i'm also also going to have a age slot and let us say a rottweiler is two years so i'm going to say two years like this and now we can see that these things are getting reflected in our dom now let us also work on the style a bit because this thing is a bit off right now so for adding styles to your custom component what you can do is you can directly go ahead in this inner html part and then you can use this style tags to directly define your complete styles within your template now you can do this thing right here but it is always recommended to create a separate style sheet which will make this code a lot cleaner and easier to maintain so for that i'm going to create a separate file called style.css and then here i'm going to paste some of the basic stylings and you need not to worry i'll be leaving the link to this complete code in the description below so you can check this whole project whenever you want now the next step is obviously to include these styles right here 
So we are going to use this link tag right here. We're going to say rel is equals to style sheet and then obviously the href. So we're going to say href that will be equals to pet card because we are in the pet card folder slash style dot CSS. Now if we save it, we can already see everything is now styled as expected. Now we, you can also see that these info the breed and age is hidden because in the styles we have initially set the display to none and we are going to handle this toggling thing right now with the help of event listeners now in order to add event listeners to our button we need to make sure that our custom component is completely mounted into our dom so for that we have a separate lifecycle method which we discussed called connected callback so in here we are going to set up our event listeners and we are going to attach those event listeners to this button so for that i'm going to say this dot shadow root dot query selector and since we have a id of greet and toggle so i'm going to do first select this toggle button and then we are going to say add event listener we're going to add a click event listener and here we're going to call a function which is going to handle this toggling thing so let's create that function and i'm going to call this toggle info so this toggle info is going to be a arrow function and here we also require a variable which basically tracks if the info is getting shown or it is hidden. So in the constructor we are going to set a variable or a property for this class called show info and this will be false by default. Now here what we are going to do is we are going to set the negation of the show info value. So whatever it is if it is true we are going to set it false, false to true. So I am going to say this dot show info is equals to not this dot show info and in here what we are going to do is we are going to select we are going to grab this info div so i'm going to say this dot shadow root dot query selector we're going to grab the info class and then we're going to say style dot i'm sorry style dot display and here we're going to check if the show info is true we are going to set the display to block otherwise we are going to set the display to none so i'm going to say this dot show info if it is true then we're going to so then we're going to say this to the block otherwise we are going to set this to none now if you save it and click on this view details button you can see that things are working but let us also change this text to hide details whenever the info is getting shown so for that i'm going to grab this button again so we can do this right here and then we can set the inner html again we are going to check if this dot show info is true or not then we are going to say hide details and show details respectively now if we save it refresh and we can see that we are seeing a view details button and then it is changed to hide details so everything is working perfectly now now let us also take care of this say hi button for that i'm going to grab this greet button like this because we have an id of greet and then here what we can do is we can simply call an anonymous arrow function and what i'm going to do is i'm going to say alert and what we're going to alert this pet will say you hi so hi there with an exclamation mark and then what we can do is we can do this string concatenation and here we will say this dot get attribute name now if we save that click on say hi we see hi there from murphy now it is always a good practice to clear or to remove this event listener when our component is unmounted so for that we also have a separate lifecycle method which we discussed called disconnected callback so we're going to say disconnected callback like this and this is a function so we're going to call it like this and we're going to grab our buttons and then we can say remove event listener we're going to pass the click like this now we need to do this same thing for our greet button also so i'm going to say this thing like this and so this is very important that you always remove any event listeners once our component unmounts now this is how we create a web components which can be reused anytime anywhere in throughout your application so let us also create two more cards like this now if we save it we can see that we have added two more pets to our html dom and we can see how clear it is how clean it is to do these things and how maintainable is this so if you want to change anything any any style or anything we just come to this one place we change it right there and you are going to see all those changes reflected moreover enables encapsulation as we talked which is very important at many cases where we don't want to expose our styles or components or variables outside that class if you like this video and found this content helpful do share it with your friends and also do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more contents like this i'll be back with more topics very soon till then stay tuned and thanks for watching